Welcome to the Tuesday Review. I'm Nathan, as always, joined by Callum, Alum, and James in the studio. How are you going, boys? Not bad. Not bad. Not full of microplastic. Not. Yeah, we're all full of microplastic yeah. in the studio. All right, but first off, um, Alum has to make a correction. Yes. So, for our bonus episode, which is a YouTube exclusive, go check it out. Yes, James has no oh, idea what's going on. No, no, on. I listened yeah. to it. It was a good episode. It was good, good. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, about? Uh, actually, tell people what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. So, they so it's, uh, it's about the uh, HBO series Quite On Set, uh, which basically goes over... Documentary series. Yeah. Um, a documentary series about basically the gongs on at Nickelodeon um, usually in the late 90s early 2000s it's rife with just you know abuse of power um, the Dan Schneider mm-hmm. Chronicles yeah. yeah and obviously people getting up to very horrible things mm. so um, you know it is a content warning but it is I'd say worth yeah. a watch so Alan Nathan and friend of the show friend Julian should we did be a bonus. watching this show before Sorry? For listening yes. to it, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't watch the show, but I already knew all the stuff. Yeah. But it's I like, listened if you, to it. If you're on the internet enough, you'll know about it yeah. already. But uh, yeah, I was oh, that, to give people context. You, yeah. you context. You guys recorded a bonus episode just for the YouTube. Yes, and uh, in that episode, I did uh, explain that Nickelodeon was more on animation originally. That is incorrect. They start off as a cable television channel for kids, and uh, they had, I, I guess. We'll call it real content or live yeah, action, live action, action. content. Mm. I, I never uh, got. The, I never really got into that stuff as a kid. Live no. action stuff. Yeah, because we were like, cartoon. As I said on the episode, we we were cartoon network people's at home. But yeah, even I, as like Nickelodeon kids, yeah, but like just the idea that was more free to air. It was mainly the cartoon stuff that yeah. would come. Right? Just yeah. like the yeah. idea of like soap operas for kids, I just kind of found weird. Well, know? that was sitcoms. Yeah. Like, but well, I never yeah, sitcoms for kids. I, I got into then. like I was. I used to watch like the Disney Channel stuff, but no, I don't don't think I've watched a lot of the Nickelodeon. No, because if I have to choose between a children's sitcom or I think a cartoon, I'd always just go for the cartoon. Yeah. Like when what? Scooby Doo. I don't. Yeah. When yeah. when did Drake and Josh come out? Like we were older by then. Like I think, I think we were yeah. uh, uh, teenagers I was, at least. Yeah. No, I was already older than. Yeah. 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 We we're not we we're not necessarily the target demographic for a lot of these um, shows when they're at their prime. Yeah. 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 But we had older, our own yeah. stuff, didn't we? Not. Yeah, but not the Dan Schneider shows. No, not the Dan yeah. Schneider stuff. Yeah. Oh, we had the one with the pencil for the nose. That was technically... <laughs> Mr. Um, Squiggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, those, those real people involved in that. that yeah, um, that's not the same kind of show. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, those, uh, what's in the box? And now Mr. if Mr. Squiggle gets <laughs> cancelled... Oh, no. If he gets accused what of some... What did he pencil for, James? Oh, Wait, no. Was that? <laughs> no, Mr. please, no. Was Mr. Squiggle like an ABC syndication or... <laughs> Something like that, I, yeah. I think that, so. That was Australian, right? I'm pretty yeah. sure it was Australian, yeah. We had Bob the Builder, you know, that wasn't like... I still do the... Do you guys remember the blackboard where you go, hurry up... Because Mr. Quiggle yeah, was taking yeah, too yeah, long. Yeah. To I don't draw. remember, but I, remember I know that. it. I know it. Yeah. in my soul. Yeah. I, I still do that quote when when I'm waiting for <laughs> when I'm waiting for something. I'm hurry. Up. So if you if you do want your childhood, wrong, oh, I remember uh, Art Attack. Art Attack. Yes, oh, I remember Art Attack. You know what we should do? <laughs> yeah. A special episode of just like kids shows we used to watch. Oh, I've got that down. Yeah, Ralph Harris. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that needs to be like a two-hour episode. Do you guys remember yeah. Ralph Harris? Start with like I wonder what he's up to. Oh, and then. Oh, if we do all that, biker mice from Mars, uh, we'll be here forever. Yeah, so it's gonna start. <laughs> it's gonna be like a two, three hour episode. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it'll be a crazy one. Um, yeah, maybe, we'll start like preschool era yeah. and then like cartoon, edgy uh, kind of. Just in teen. case anyone missed it, Callum also said, "What about the Rolf Harris shows?" Yeah. Ooh, speaking, a, talking about get, getting cancelled. Yes. Where's so. my wobble board? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Too bad we don't have the soundboard for that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, due to technical issues in the studio, there will be no soundboard yeah. shenanigans. I, did, I downloaded a whole bunch of new sounds for the soundboard, but now we've got technical issues, so we can't yeah. use the soundboard. <laughs> so, oh, well. It's fine. So, Alan, you know, finish your... Uh, but basically, yeah, that was the main correction from it, that they have been doing, I guess, live-action content from the get-go, which is even less of an excuse for what they did then. Because, again, yeah, the whole idea I was saying was some of the inappropriate humour that they had... Um, could be understood of like a lot of cartoons oh, had inappropriate yeah. humor, but that'd be it can go over the kids' heads. The adults can have a chuckle. Mm. And as ev- we said in that episode, it's a lot more sinister doing oh, it man, when like you're getting action, actual real kids, kids yeah. to act Nathan it out. Showed, Nathan showed me a clip of the Ariana Grande stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. and that stuff was like bad. Yeah, yeah. somebody yeah. had to say, "Hey, yeah, like you okay. can't yeah. even if you were just like a lighting guy, yeah. like a member of the crew, and you're like filming this, you'd be like what the hell? Like, how? Yeah. No, they everyone knew. Yeah, yeah, awful." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, while well, we're bringing the show down, I guess. Anyway, yeah. yeah so listen to that bonus episode. It's only on you, our YouTube page. Yeah. Yes. So there is a reason to subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> no video, but audio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Thanks, Alan, for getting that up on YouTube for us. What's it called again? Uh, quiet on. Set. Quiet on set. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, I guess we're just going to take it easy this week, do a bit of a round table. I know James has been watching a few new movies lately. Yes. Any um, any special movies that you'd like to talk about? Oh, first? you want me to talk about the monkeys? Yeah, let's hear. Let's hear about the monkeys. Oh, uh, let's talk is about this the monkeys. The monkeys. The rise um, of the monkeys. Or? Rise of the monkeys. Rise well, of the planet of the monkeys. Before James begins, yes, I found out that like. I thought that the the apes movies were just like the one film where he's like, "You damn dirty apes." No, there's a whole yeah. franchise. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, wow, this because fr- apparently the this new franchise is going to tie into the old franchise. That's what it's looking um, like. Yeah. And then I'm like, wow, so like you have actually have a massive library to, to go through these things now because I thought it was just the one. I was like, oh yeah, if you if you actually watch like the classic '70s yeah. stuff and the new stuff, yeah, it's a whole. Big that's all. That's awesome. Thing. I just want to point that out there because I yeah. thought it was just like the one film. No. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, for context, I'm a huge fan of the original 1968 Planet of the Apes. It's a stone cold classic. One I've of the never greatest. seen it. But oh. All I know, all I know Dr. is the Jane Silent Bob's. The Jane Silent Bob. You blew it up. Damn you, all. Damn you, all. And of course, you know the Troy McClure and the, and the Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah. Dr. The Dr. stage Dr. play. Says, Dr. Oh, Doctor Says. Yeah, I think me and Alex were singing yeah. this uh, <laughs> during the 200th episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm a huge fan of the original. One of the greatest sci-fi movies of all time. One of the greatest endings of all time. Possibly even one of the greatest movies of all time. Just huge fan. I'm also the sequels in the 70s. They're all worth watching and really interesting uh, none of them are as good and they're kind of, they kind of get kind of silly and they get kind of weird but that's kind of why they're interesting because some of them just get really weird and they're also kind of dark in tone like they get kind of dark and it's kind of Isn't strange when that destroys the whole yeah or something? yeah like yeah. i mean the first one's a post-apocalyptic movie but that the further they go along and then there's time travel and like mm. silly stuff but it's like are there any banana jokes <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that there has to be. There has to be. Um, but yeah, it gets kind of dark and weird. Anyway. Oh, is there racism between like the different simian groups? There is racism. Yeah, there's... Uh, and the, 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 the orang- Speciesism. The orang- Speciesism. Yeah, the orangutan... Is there any monkey business? The orangutans <laughs> are the leaders. They're like the uh, the elders. Yeah, because yeah. they're the smart monkeys. Yeah, and then the chimpanzees are like the scientists and the kind of... They're the weak boys. Let's say white, yeah. white collar workers. And then the gorillas are the security guards yeah, and the, the kind boys. of blue collar yeah. What about the muscle bonobos? Boys. The who? Bonobos. Well, bonobos aren't really in the original one, so but they the are three, in the, the, three the main main one. Yeah, it's in the main one. Anyway, so yeah... The original, one of my favorites, the, the actual 70s movies, really, really interesting. Um, and then they did in 2011? Was yeah, wasn't r- there one with Marky Mark? Oh, that was the, re- that was the remake in <laughs> yeah. 2001. That, that's a bad movie. <laughs> we uh, can skip that one. Has some, it t- oh, sure, that monkey movie is the bad one just because it has Marky Mark. We'll get to him well, later. He, he, well, I mean, everyone knows I <laughs> yeah. don't like him. He's a terrible actor. Yeah. But that's... He's just one of the reasons why it's a yeah. bad movie. Um, it does have some really cool uh, production design, costume design, but it's not. It's not. Yeah, not it's, very it's good. nothing. Very but good. anyway, flash forward, we get to 2011. Uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes comes out. With, unfortunately, another troublesome actor, James Franco. Yes, but luckily to, he's only in the first one. Yeah, so. I um I watched this movie with me mum, mm. and I had to break her heart. I'm like, see that actor? He's a bad man. Oh, you didn't have to tell her. <laughs> yeah. Just let the other. Yeah, <laughs> it's like look him up, mum. Did you look tell her the controversy <laughs> section? Did you, did you tell her he might also be Fidel son? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm thinking <laughs> of Fidel the uh, Canadian Prime Minister. Sorry, never mind. Wait, what? Yeah, that's a whole yeah, that's thing. A, that's a whole thing. Okay, yeah, we yeah, won't go into that. Um, anyway, so that movie comes out. I remember I was in uni at the time, and of course. They and it was the whole thing was like Andy Circus was the main chimp Caesar and he's in the mocap suit and they CGI'd all the apes and I'm kind of like no I like the old makeup apes even the yeah. Tim Burton apes like the ma- the Rick Baker makeup and that is incredible it's like uh, I don't you know everyone knows I don't like CGI I heard the movie yeah. I heard mixed things about the movie I never really bothered watching it then. The second one comes out, the sequel to that, which is Dawn, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn, yeah. which the names should actually be switched. The first one should be Dawn and the second one should be Rise, yeah. but they switched. Um, but they they yeah, didn't, yeah. yeah. So the second one comes out, Dawn, in 2014, I think. Yeah. And that one comes out. And I hear, I hear it's pretty good, but like none of us really were into it. None of my other friends have seen it. No. So I was just kind of like, oh, one, one day. For the, one for the normies. 
Yeah, like yeah. one day I'll. One we, all, day... we all looked at it collectively and we're just like CG yeah. hands. You know yeah. The, yeah. The, it's the, also. The no meme with. Um, is it Bugs Bunny? It was like, no. No. The one that got us <laughs> banned on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't suggestive at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm sorry about that. Um, so that movie comes. And I think it's also because I'm such a big fan of the original that anything, any kind of legacy sequel yeah. or remake or reboot. I'm kind of like, ew, kind of thing. Mm. Be like, yeah, anytime they do that, I'm like, I don't know about this. So that comes out. Then in 2017, the third movie comes out, War for the Planet of the Apes. And I hear that one's pretty good too. And I remember being like, maybe I should go back and watch mm. the first two and watch this one. But you guys weren't really interested. I'm like, i got other stuff to watch. One day I'll get around to it. Anyway, a few years go by. And then a couple years ago, before The Batman comes out, directed by Matt Reeves, who had done Dawn and War, um, I was like, oh, I should go back and watch those movies because he's doing The Batman and, you know, I'll see yeah. his previous movies, whatever. Um, so I watched Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which is the 2011 one, which uh, he, he didn't direct it. I think Rupert, Rupert someone directed it. Anyway, the one with James Franco, that one. And I was like, yeah, it's not too bad. The one not... thing I was surprised... I've seen this movie recently. Yeah. I was surprised. Even now, the CG actually doesn't... Some it, of the close-ups, I'm like, wow, that looks yeah. almost real. Uh, from a movie from back then, yeah. like, some of the shots, I was like, that's actually pretty good. Considering, I'm surprised. Considering like, even movies now, the CGI looks bad. And I'm like, oh, if they, if you actually do put effort into it... I actually saw a thread. It's interesting you say that. I saw mm. a thread on Twitter um, like earlier in the week, like mm. last week, maybe late last week, maybe. I was actually talking about how there was a time in the mid to late, like um, from like to the mid 2000s to like early 2010s, yeah, where some of the CG was actually really good. Hmm. The reason they started chipping out on it was because it was quite expensive yeah. to get it that good when hmm. they found out that audiences would accept well, got outsourced worse think, looking CG. Got outsourced. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so also, you can get more worse looking CG for the same money as a little bit of really good CG. It, it's also something we've talked about many times before where they spread themselves too thin now, where they start was using it, CGI for things they don't need it for, and, and it, just yeah. the whole movie is just S slightly related. Was it recently, was it the production behind Invincible recently got called out for maybe unknowingly having their animation made in North Korea? <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, I know, yeah. I know like the Simpsons and a lot of animated shows are animated in South Korea. Yeah, no, so it's, there, apparently there's... Is it possible they, they source, outsource it to South Korea and then South Korea was I, like... I would say it's more like they outsource it to Chinese... Um, yes, Chinese yes, that makes sense. Yeah, and then they'd be like, oh, I'll take because care of the I know that's a thing. So you've that's got this grey... <laughs> we're having a giggle, but you've got this grey slash black market yeah. industry for animation. Oh, well, I and think I we, would imagine that also extends to CG. Yeah, no, I think we Better talked about AI. this. I think we talked about this one time where a lot of like CG, yeah, used to be done in the US and then they started outsourcing it to like UK or Canada. And now they're outsourcing it to like India or China, so it's yeah. it's always just whatever mm. cheap the cheapest option we can get, and that's one of the reasons why CGI keeps yeah. getting seemingly keeps so, getting worse. So at least it's rises also, in the Goldilocks period before it got yeah. outsourced. But it's also the way that it's way the way that's used. Like yeah. you know, everyone I, I, we've talked about, everyone always likes to talk about. Oh, Jurassic Park, the dinosaurs look awesome. It's because only like fifteen shots have CGI. Yeah, and it's nineteen ninety three CGI. It's yeah. not very good, but. Everything else is practical. Yeah. And so you don't really... It doesn't really take away... Whereas now with the Jurassic World movies, everything's CGI. Not just yeah. all the dinosaurs. Not just... Like sometimes the people are and sometimes the buildings and the environments. And it's just like... We'll get to bad CGI Dude. Later. Yeah. So anyway, Rise of the Planet Ants. I'm like, hey, this is pretty good. And I think one of the reasons I enjoyed it is because it's more about the characters and the story. And sometimes when the CGI is a bit dodgy, it's like, okay... Everything else is okay. But everything think, else... Yeah. Is, and you kind of care about the, the monkeys and, you know, Caesar as a character, like... Um, the orangis. Yeah, the orang... Oh, the orangutans look amazing in Planet of the Apes. I don't know why, but they always look the most realistic. Mm. Uh, it would be... Yeah. I would be interested to see why. Maybe it's just... I don't know. I don't anyway. Know. The, the lead animator is just like, I love me orangutans, mate. This is a fashion <laughs> project. Take them over with me. I'm going to animate this at home. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that one's good. Then I watched um, uh, Dawn, which was Matt Reeves' first one, the sequel to Rise. I'm like, oh, that one I really like. 
that one's a good like last of us style post-apocalyptic movie where the world has ended and there's only a few humans left and like the world is the you know the human world the cities and that are kind of overgrown and all the concrete's cracked and all yeah. the the weeds are growing out and they've kind of got like this makeshift yeah. society. Keep the spoilers then, light, James. I'm not up to date yet. No, no, I'm just yeah. giving the setup. Yeah. And then, and then also you've got the uh, ape community, who's yeah. its own kind of developing thing. Yeah. So that's really cool. And then war. That's also a continuation of that. That's really cool too. So then a few years go by, and now they release the new one, um, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And so I'm like, it's not being done by Matt Reeves because he's doing the Batman movies. I didn't, you know, I didn't really like the Batman that much. Um, I probably would have, he probably would have been better off staying with the Planet of the Apes movies. But anyway, um, yeah, so before I went to the cinema to see the new one, I rewatched uh, the, previous, the previous three. And I really enjoyed them even more this second time around because I'm like, you know what? They're not perfect films by mm. any means. They look nice. But, yeah, but... Some of the CGI is amazing. Some of it's not so good. Yeah. But I just like the story and the characters is pretty good. And I like that they... Not only are they respectful of the original like 60s and 70s movies. And yeah, they have a lot of uh, Easter eggs and stuff that's good for fans like me. But you can tell the people making it actually love Planet of the Apes. And also they... Are, even though it's made in a time where everything is just dumb superhero movies or you know like stuff like that they seem to be sticking to more of a serious kind of uh sci-fi philosophical kind of thing that yeah, the originals had we have where, a kind of problem now where people just seem to make fun of sci-fi like it'll be like a sci-fi movie but yeah or I it's or it's just like superhero sci-fi where it's yes it's technically sci-fi but, but it's, it's just like, guys it's also flying like, it's and also shooting kind and of like dumbed yelling. down sci-fi it's yeah. like it Sci-fi used to be philosophical. I do like... And, like, I think we've kind of moved into this explosion-y sci-fi. It has less time for interesting I mean, concepts, high art Yeah, kind of I, stuff. I mean, this action sci-fi has always been a thing. But, yeah, like, sometimes it's good just to have, like... I do like how they play in Dry Dawn, of the, the second one. Mm. How they play it where you're sympathetic to both the humans and the apes. Yeah. I like that. It's like there's not one kind of good guy and bad guy. It's complicated. Yeah. And I do like that aspect. They developed that over three movies as like the... the, Yeah, the the, dichotomy. Yeah. And how not every human is bad. Not every ape is bad. Yeah, exactly. So I do like that. Yeah. So I think, yeah, they're they're really interesting movies and they kind of keep that core kind of fun sci-fi... There's the fun kind of action scenes, which are great, but also like that cool sci-fi, like what if scenario, like, you know, yeah, and the philosophical nature of like, what if human society collapse and ape society, uh, you know, rises, rise, yeah, yeah evolves. So there, yeah, Kingdom of Play Apes, the new one that just came out, I went to the cinema to see it after rewatching the previous three and I enjoyed it, but It's getting to a point now where, because it's full on Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, like the the apes have taken over the world, there's more CGI than there ever has been before. Is that because of a change of director or is that because of... I think it's uh, possibly the the director, but it's also just the story because now the whole world is run by apes, basically. So, and, and... So, it makes sense that uh, there will be more apes, more CGI, but it's more than I perhaps would like, Um, but none of it was so bad that I was like, worst movie ever. Yeah. And also, they still keep the, like, the characters and the story going to where I was still engaged. Um, They, I won't go into spoilers, but they... I understand, I can see where they're taking the franchise direction and I will be interested to see because this is apparently the second trilogy planned. So the first trilogy was Rise, Dawn and War. Now there's Kingdom and then two more movies mm. in this trilogy. And then apparently they're going to do three more movies in Far the future. Out. So they got, they got visions. Yeah. So on one hand, that's awesome. They have these vision. But what I like about this franchise is that it's like the first three movies came out like every few years. And then there was a gap and then COVID, obviously. And then Kingdom came out. 
I hope they don't rush them all out and try to. Yeah. I know eventually because money and studios yeah. are like, eventually they're going to be like, here's the TV show spin off and here's the animated. Da, 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 da. Marky Mark comes back and yeah. they rope it back in. Yeah. And they, could just make <laughs> and a, they could just make a sitcom, but it's just like apes. Just like that would an ape like and a office, human. Like the office. Like, yeah. It's like the cool. office. It's odd, the, the odd office. couple. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. No, like, I mean, the original Planet Apes base basically was just like cashing in. There was like toys and cartoons and lunchboxes and stuff. But um, I I like how the previous three movies in, you know, the 2010s kind of avoided that. Yeah, yeah it was a kind of a big franchise, but it wasn't yeah. like go. Now I think they're going to go too they're gonna far. They're going to go hard, yeah. Um, especially because Disney take, has taken over Fox, whereas those three movies were made under, under just Fox. Fox. Yeah. Now they're made under, under Disney. Disney. So that changes the whole yeah, game. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, so I hope they don't go. I hope they don't run into the ground and and spread it too thin. But I'll be interested. I, I I'm interested to see the next two movies in this trilogy, and then I think I know where this trilogy is going, and then where the third trilogy is going to sort of start to tie into the original movie. So they're going to come sort of yeah. full circle. Which, if you know anything about the time travel aspect of the original movies, it's interesting. Yeah, if it, if it all works out. Yeah. Um. So Kingdom, I didn't like as much as the previous three, but if you like the previous three, it's worth worth catching up and and if you haven't seen the previous three, it's worth catching up and seeing the new mm. one. And if you like the previous three, I think you'll like you'll the get new something one. Out of it, yeah. But personally, I didn't think it was as good as the previous. All right. Before we move on, we also have, we have a little bit more monkey business. Mm-hmm. You also watched Monkey Man. Oh, you watched it? No, you watched it. I want to know what you oh, think about oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been a while since I watched it. Um, just, it doesn't have to I, be deep. Just uh, yeah, know, I, brief thoughts. So, it's Dev Patel's uh, directorial debut. He also stars in it. People have been saying, like, uh, it's the Indian John Wick. Um, is there an Indian John Wick, though, Alan? <laughs> I'm sure there is. <laughs> I don't want to do the accent. Can you give me permission? No. Because I, yeah. I... John Wick. <laughs> okay. was that a european henchman <laughs> <laughs> um anyway uh yeah so i i mean it was like it looked interesting dev patel's cool guy first movie as a director also what's interesting is this movie was originally going to be released by netflix um and they got cold feet and one of the and they're like no we're not going to release it and typical netflix bullshit but also one of the problems I think they got cold feet is that the movie kind of deals with Indian politics and uh, is kind of like a progressive okay. they kind of like... They didn't want a reaction. Yeah, yeah from, they, they from, didn't want to offend like anyone. Or, especially because I assume Indian Netflix is a huge part yeah. of their mm. business. And the current government in control is very, very happy to just destroy any kind of media independence. Or Yeah, yeah. and this movie, uh, even though it's a fictional... Like it's the fictional prime minister yeah, of yeah, yeah, India. Yeah, yeah. You can tell Dev Patel does not like the current government in yeah, India, yeah. and this M- Monkey Man movie is about that. Yeah. So they obviously Netflix was kind of like, oh, we don't want to offend anyone, we don't want to lose any audience yeah. or whatever. So they, I mean, they know, um, and I understand, you know, when you're dealing with a government, that's, have some spine. Yeah, I know. You know, but, I know. Uh, you know, but like, this is the problem. It's yeah. like they're not there. They're not. To, they're not there to make art or or to make a, a a statement. They're there to make money, and so they're just like, "Sorry, Dev, you're shelved." Luckily, Jordan Peele, uh, who has his um, his production company, Monkey which Paul? funnily enough is called Monkey Paw. Oh man! But all about just out of coincidence, tonight. yeah. Um, uh, he has a deal with Universal, um, and so he convinced them to buy it from Netflix and release it. And so, instead of just getting dumped on Netflix, it got a cinema release. So, that's good, at least. It sort of yeah. came out that way. Uh, I went to see it with some friends at the cinema. I enjoyed it. I think it's good. I just think it's a bit messy. It's trying to do a lot, and mm. it doesn't really achieve them all, and it doesn't really come all together at the end. I think one of my biggest... Stylistically, it looks cool, and the you know soundtrack's cool, whatever you know, as this kind of, um, you know, all these remixes of classic songs, which can be a bit cheesy, but it's like fun. It's like a fun. Yeah. And it's got really, you know, you violent. A bit, you need a bit of cheese. Yeah. It's got some violent bits. 
But I think my biggest problem is that you can tell Dev and the stunt performers trained really hard to do all the fight scenes and then they do the whole shaky cam quick uh, cut bullshit and yeah. i was like what have you done it's 2024 <laughs> yeah. people have been complaining about this remember, crap for de- I mean, uh, over a decade remember when daredevil more. first came out yeah the tv show yeah on netflix yeah and it they won all sorts of acclaim for the hallway fight yeah and it's like it was just a choreographed hallway fight with the camera stuck up in the corner. Yeah. But John, every time, like yeah. John Wick comes out and everyone's like, Mo- action movies are back. This is how action yeah. should be. You can actually see what's going on. You can actually <laughs> hear what's going on, yada, yada. And we're still getting these movies where it's the camera shaking and it's cut, 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 cut. And I don't understand it. And especially Dev Patel should know better. You know what it is? You haven't watched Blazing Saddles, have you, at LMD? No. It's, there's <laughs> That's the camera- something we have to watch there's, together. There's the cameraman being like, this is my shooting hand. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, that's a visual joke. I wish. Says, yeah, he's shaking. Sh- yeah. yeah. <laughs> is. You know what, though? Like, <laughs> I guess, I guess on, everyone... Emma. Maybe Dev Patel thought the same until he had the camera in his hand. And then he was like, actually, these quick cuts are sick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, maybe uh, you'll I, be the same. You'll make a movie know, and maybe you'll be like, you know what? I was wrong all Stylistically, along. he's like, oh, more energy. And I'm like, dude, no. Like, we, <laughs> Born Supremacy came out 20 years ago. Like, yeah. it's not a cool thing to do anymore. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that disappointed me because I think the action should have been a highlight of this movie. And it ends up just kind of being like, oh, camera's shaking. Yeah, that well. Um, yeah, and story-wise, it's a bit over the messy, and there's a lot going on. There is, there's a certain certain people are introduced later in the movie that I think should have been woven throughout more. Um, it's worth watching, um, but I don't think it's great. Um, I'll be interested to see, you know, if he directs another movie, what he does next. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like. It. Don't take this the wrong way, but if it does come on Netflix, if it does come on a streaming service, that would be a good place to watch it. Yeah. Because even though I would, you know, I like to, I would like to support Dev Patel and I went to the movies to see it, I'm like, I wouldn't recommend you have to go out and see it. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm an average like, movie. Yeah, I'm like, you could, you could wait for streaming on this one. Fair enough. Yeah. We'll be, uh, we'll be back with more right after this short break. You're back on the Tuesday review. Uh, are you saying something? No, sorry. I just because <laughs> Callum's got like 700 movies. Yeah. And Callum, you don't have to get through all of them. No, no, just, just the highlights. Pick, pick out the highlights and like what you actually want to talk. That's about. That's why yeah, we got yeah. to James first. Yeah, that's why because I had actual yeah. stuff to. Yeah, new movies to talk about. Yeah, and um, and stuff I wanted to expand. Um, upon. What do you want to uh, number one, uh, Phantom Thread, obviously an older movie from 2017. Oof, classic. I, uh, love I that asked movie. the boys to watch it. Raise your hand if you watched it after I told you. I've seen it many times, so I didn't need to rewatch it. No, I haven't oh, seen what it. a failure! Okay, in the studio. have you seen cha- Sugar? All right, yeah, I'm watching. Like, you know, I'm watching movies. Oh no, 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 that's not an excuse. Like, oh, you guys <laughs> need to do this for me. So can you do this? No, I've got this other thing going on. Everything. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. come on, Calm. Hypocrisy um, much? Rules for thee and yeah, not yeah, for me. Anyway, <laughs> fan- anyway, uh, Phantom Thread. Uh, according to um, my best friend PTA, as as we like to call him. Yep. Um, it's like an ode to Kubrick. He was inspired by. Uh, like movies like The Color Palettes of Barry Lyndon and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, so he created a beautiful romance drama mm. that's Daniel Day Lewis's one of his many finest hours. Mm. It's his last uh, film. Yeah. Um, and man, beautifully shot, you know, like oh, physical amazing. to touch. Johnny um, Greenwood's score? Yeah, and just an incredible film. And of course, the costumes. Mm. <laughs> well, funny you say that. I put it. In ch- I started watching it. So there's this guy on. There's this famous guy on Twitter called Derek Guy, who's a male fashion expert. And yeah. all he talks, he does these long threads on male fashion and how it works in the history of fashion. Mm. And one of his particular sins that he always brings up when, it, like, if there's like a photo shoot or like a, a red carpet thing or whatever, mm. there's a thing that's like the gap between the suit jacket's collar and the shirt is when uh, something hasn't been tailored correctly. Yeah. So when a piece of clothing has been tailored correctly, it always shits sits snug around your, your like your neck and your shoulders yeah when it and has when it has been when it has been yeah. tailored correctly and when it hasn't when like people stand up or they do something you'll see this really big gap mm. and i laughed because i'm like the this movie about like a um 
prodigy uh, fashion icon. Mm. Uh, and his, tailor, his suit yeah. hasn't been tailored correctly. Actually, it's, it, he's not a tailor, is it? Is it a tailor? He's a, he's a seamstress. I guess a seamstress. Seam- would that be the correct seam- word? Seam- yeah. A seamster? Yeah, I don't know. He's what the word yeah. Is. He he creates yeah. dresses. Yeah. Um, but I just thought that was funny. Like this this uh, this, this guy who knows everything about tailoring. Yeah. Well, apparently um, Daniel Day Lewis because his method he like learned how he to did, sew yeah. and he all those all the uh you know the uh what do you call it the little pin pricks the, on his fingers yeah. and the 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 skin the yeah. the kind of scabbed skin is all real because he yeah. was he's crazy um he's the best man anyway yeah i thought that was just a wonderful that's film that's an incredible film i think um, it might be one of paul thomas anderson's best one of many of his best yeah. but he's got so many um so neither these neither of the protagonists are good people and i won't go no. into why because of spoilers yeah but in in one specific way he's just so much worse <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Vicky movie- Vicky Cripps is great in that movie though, and um, so is Leslie Manville. Yeah. Where, you know yeah. when at the breakfast and she's like, "Don't, don't pick yeah, a fight." I know. With me. I know. I, was like, I know. Oof. The man, the man's obviously on the spectrum, which just not talked about because they didn't have that language. <laughs> no, but you know, you know when she yeah. like because you know he's a he's a bi- uh, yeah, he's uh, a dick, and then she's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. not gonna win." Yeah, I know. And he's like, how can I function now that there was the noise of a spoon during breakfast? And then he like storms <laughs> out. Yeah, he's <laughs> such a. <laughs> um, <laughs> For my hungry boy. So then I watched uh, the That's police a story. Quote movies. from the movie. I wasn't just being weird. Um, I watched Police Story One and Two, which I'd never seen before. Nice. And uh, they were fantastic. Police Story One's better. I preferred it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's funnier. Got you know what nice, I mean? That nice Criterion set. Um, and yeah, I got the 4K. Actually, I haven't watched them yet. Jackie Chan's just so cool. Mm. Not not in real life, but you know, in the movies. <laughs> well, yeah, that we won't go um, into. We, so we're talking about a lot of like cancelled, cancelled or cancelled, cancelled. No, I had no idea. People. I had no idea that he yeah. was like an actual member of the com. Is or was yeah. a member of the communist. And he party. disowned his daughter because she's gay. Yeah, nice. and a whole yeah, bunch of other things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, and uh, he killed quick, a man as a bouncer. I rewatched um, cool. allegedly, allegedly, okay. yeah. I re no, like, According to him, he's not sure if the man lived or died. That's like his own words. Mm. I rewatched Marriage Story. Oh, still holds up. I love it so much. Oh, great movie. Um, now, one I wanted to highlight specifically, mm-hmm. and you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. <laughs> Here right? we go. I rewatched The Other Guys. Oh, it's such a good movie. Yeah, let me say. Oh, yeah. I couldn't stop laughing. I understand it's not the best directed film, but that script is hilarious. I haven't seen it in a very long time. I have to rewatch it. I laughed my ass off from the minute it started to the minute it ended. I remember. Gators, bitches, better than Jimmy's. <laughs> yeah, and also, I'm a pe- <laughs> I forgot about yeah. that. <laughs> I'm a pe- I'm a peacock <laughs> captain. You have to let me fly. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, um, I've completely yeah, no, forgot back here about and that. Dump button, my wife. <laughs> yeah, and there's like that that whole thing where Ava Mendez is obviously gorgeous, and then yeah, he's like, "Don't, yeah, yeah. she's playing, ignore her." I You're forgot ugly. about that. Yeah. Um, it's, anyway, it's just the, only, the only thing. <laughs> the only thing I remember that from the movie is Michael Keaton is the police captain, and then yeah. he like works at Bed Bath and Beyond yeah. part time. Yeah. yeah, that's for some reason I always remember that. That um, is that is such a good movie. Yeah, I'll have to rewatch it. Alan, have you seen the other guys? Mm. That, Spiritu- that's spiritually, a, that's an Alan movie. Yeah, spiritually, it has to be one of your favorite movies. Is that the one with Will Ferrell? And y- yes, Will Ferrell and, and uh, Mark Marky Wilbur. Mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Will Ferrell's uh, got Eva Mendes as his yeah. wife. Yeah, yeah. He's, like treating her badly. And that's stuff. what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 it's so funny. Yeah. Um, I watched uh, Night Falls on Manhattan by Sidney Lumet. Oh, I've got that on Blu-ray. I haven't watched it. Oh, yet. dude, it's so good. I love me a good courtroom drama, the, and yeah. this one delivers. The imprint. Blu-ray? Yeah, 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 I've got that. Um, now, the most important one of the whole lot, last left time, uh, I watched Nebraska for the first time. Oh, yeah. Um, and that movie was incredible. I loved it. Uh, Alexander Payne? Yes. Yes. Uh, John Voight, um, Better Call Saul guy, um, um, Bob Odenkirk, um, and then the lead, I can't remember the lead. He's not uh, Bruce Stern. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a great actor. And Will Forte, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, can you look it up, Nathan? Um, yes, but yeah, yeah, uh, so good. I love that movie so much. I, the um, way I described that movie to someone once was, you know, in uh, King of the Hill, where they're all standing out front of the fence drinking, drinking beers yeah. and like, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, yeah. I'm like, it's kind of that atmosphere of a movie. It's just like old yeah. guys who don't really talk to each other. Kind of. Bruce, it's, yeah, it's Bruce also, Stern, Will Forte, Bob Odenkirk. It's also so much yeah. more bitchier than that. <laughs> So, yeah, but you know what I mean? Um, that kind of mid, I don't know, Midwest, if that's the um, right. I lo- so I love it because like America, such a f- part of America is so flat. Hmm. And I love seeing the flatness of America, as dumb as that sounds. Like when you're driving no, down the highway yeah. and it's just flat. My yeah. mind re- re- repels my mind. It's amazing. Yeah. 
Um, but it's just like it's emotional. It's black and white, so it's like moody as well. It has this moody vibe to it. Hmm. The score is awesome. I love a good drive movie, like a just a car Road trip movie. movie. Yeah. Uh, and just drama. It's just like a great quality drama. Hmm. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Nice. Um, and I watched uh, Norseka of the Valley of, of the Wind. Oh, that's my favorite studio um, Ghibli movie. I don't know if I've given a, G- a Ghibli movie less than five stars and a heart. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, it's kind of hard. <laughs> uh, I also watched The Never Ending Story. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Did it end? Um, yeah, it was false advertising. Yeah, We're going to sue the... No spoilers, no spoilers, yeah. but I just want Falcor, you know. That like that's one of those classic eighties um, uh fantasy movies like Labyrinth or whatever, movie. where you're just like yeah, oh, they don't so make cool. movies like a that. Family anymore. movie when it was literally yeah. a family and also, movie and it had yeah, something for They're kinda everyone. weird, kinda scary. Is that the one where the guy keeps Fun. losing memories as he wishes? Or no. Is that a different movie? No, that's no. different. No, it's a, yeah, not um You might be thinking of the Princess Bride. Never ending story well, is also as you wish. Kind of traumatizing. Um, I don't think Alan seen Princess Bride. What the, I like about the, the, no, that's the one with the Andre the Giant, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's got nothing to do with. Oh, I thought because they're, they're similar fantasy films, you know, kind Are of eighties yeah. fantasy. But anyway, yeah, that that was. Um, what I like about the Neverending Story is having watched it in this year, hmm. uh, is that like instead of CGing stuff, and I, there wasn't really CG in like eighty four or whatever. Yeah. Um, they would just like I guess stitch or however they did it, like Falcor into New York. So yeah, like Matt, like, they'd do, yeah, they'd, um... No, like, like they, had, Fal- they would just, like, invert, they would just, like, put Falcor in New York, and he's obviously not there, it's like, they filmed it separately. Yeah, it, like, it just you looks, could, but it they, just looks, they, they had, like, green screen and blue screen and stuff, but it's just the, the you yeah. can see sort of the matte lines around yeah. the Falcor puppet yeah, and on I'd the like, footage of the... It's so much more preferable than some of the awful CG, you know, because I can like forgive... If the, see, the thing is, if it. they did it practically today and then just had dig- more better digital compositing, it would be yeah, perfect. awesome. Yeah. Um, but they don't... They, they Now they just CGI everything. My final selection of movies, if you will, uh, is the Final Destination franchise. Yeah. Um, and man, what a train wreck. Um, so the, f- the first movie is okay. The second movie is fine. Three and four are awful, and then five was pretty. Five was okay. Yeah. Um. I think it's the reason I think the first one's so beloved is because it came out in like two thousand. So for like a lot of people our age, it was like, oh, let's go see this horror movie. You know, Final Destination. There were a lot of like that early. I know th- what you did last summer. Yeah. There's yeah. That, that Scream, era. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that era. The Frosted was like Tips big. era of, of yeah, horror yeah, movies. Yeah. Alpha. It was Someone, also. It's like we have, we have, have a little soft spot for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it Sean Scott. Sean William Scott's in the cast. What? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was also. It was also. It wasn't the first movie to do this because we talked about other similar movies, but it was like, it was an interesting concept. Yeah. Like, it wasn't just a slasher movie. And the, what was the name of that movie that did it before? Uh, there was... The, the one we talked about on the show. The, the, I watched one the about Survivor? the pilot called The Survivor, and then there was a, the other one with the lady, she survives. Yeah. That's was the that, one was that called Survivor as well? I can't sure. remember, but either way, yeah. that film does this idea better than the Final Destination franchise. Mm. So the problem I have with this franchise is that, but that Final Destination, I'm assuming, is more about the kills. Yes, whereas and that, therein therein lies the problem. That so movie the, was more about the dread of like, well, death is following her or whatever. Yeah, and so that's it's it's kind of the same idea. They just handle it differently because I mean, obviously, she uh, she doesn't die. I mean, you know. She has, to survive. she has to survive through the whole film, you know what I mean? Because yeah. she's the main character. I only get punked at the end. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, Psych! But the problem is that in the Final Destination franchise, because it doesn't have an antagonist per se, it's like this ephemeral fate kind of thing. And I guess you could say it's like a paranormal activity ghost that loosens some screws or whatever. Yeah. The problem is the franchise relies entirely on characters doing the dumbest thing in any possible scenario. Yeah. No, like yeah, that's typical, typical, like, typical anyway. horror no, no, no. trope. You, yeah. think, you think you think it's like it's not it's way worse. It's like someone will slip on a coin and then fall out a twenty story window. And then I'm like I see the movie. I'm like, come on, you know. Just no, I'm like, like and that, that, that's something music that's like, something that happens in one of the movies is someone falls out a window in like the mm-hmm. dumbest way. I'm like, you can't Death needs to be more of a character in this film, mm. not just a that, force that happens to loosen so, some bolts. Yeah. So my friend Ed is a massive fan of these movies, even though he's like you. He's like, they went kind of off the rails and they went in the wrong direction. And it's a lot of misstep opportunities. 
Um, I've got them on Blu-ray as well, but I was going to watch them during um, Spooktober this year. Um, but one of the things he said is like they miss an opportunity to make an actual villain as in God or fate yeah. or something yeah. like that. Um, so that's maybe when I watched them during Spooktober, maybe we can talk about them more. Well, um, one of the recurring one of the recurring characters uh, is it uh, Tony Todd, who's the Candyman. Candyman, yeah, Tony yeah, Todd. he's a recurring character, and he's like you know the guy who cleans up when they die. So the, hmm. you have an opportunity. That's weird. Yeah, he's like the um the coroner, the um like the medical guy they send out to all the deaths. <laughs> he he's like a stand. You could use him as a stand-in for some representation of the force of mm. death or whatever that's chasing them. And they talk about balancing the score. You know what I mean? Like the idea yeah. is you, 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 you surviving is a steal from death. So yeah. therefore you either have someone else has to die in your place or you have to die. So the scales are balanced. Yeah. Like you need to play into that more into that, that like world building more. Like mm. we talked about with smile, like a new home, not new now, but yeah, uh, when it came out, we talked about how they did the legwork to try and figure out what was going on with the curse. Mm. That's what this. If this film isn't going to have an an, this franchise isn't going to have an antagonist, mm. it needs that detective element, which they sometimes try to get where they philosophize. Oh, I think I figured it out. Mm. They have the perfect lead right with the visions. So each each movie has someone who has a vision, a premonition that saves them from dying. Mm. So to me. There's opposing forces in this franchise, right? You have whatever's instigating the visions, mm. and then you have the force of death. Mm. We need to see more about that struggle. How or why are these visions occurring, and why is someone trying to prevent deaths? Mm. That's if you don't have a villain, these yeah. are things you can play with to deepen your world and make it more engaging. It seems like most horror movie franchises, one when it comes down to budget, and they're just like, let's shoot this real quickly. Who cares? But also, they just miss opportunities where they're just like, it's just about the kills. It's just about teenagers dying. It's just, we're just making this cheaply and quickly to get bums and seats to make yeah. money. And they didn't actually think of like, oh, let's evolve the law. Yeah. And that's, that's such a misstep because that, there's a new one coming out. Uh, Final Destination heard, yeah. Bloodlines. Oh. So, you know, Hellraiser did it first, the same. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you know, the kills aren't even that great. There's a few good ones. Mm. But like, it's like sometimes like an amber will just drop on a guy's head. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, like yeah, it happens. Yeah. And it's like, and like the head explodes. Does and I was it, like, yeah, nice. There was only a couple kills that made me Does it say go, Acme nice. on the side of the <laughs> anvil? <laughs> was the uh, uh, tanning booth seen in the in the first one? Or was it? Uh, no, not the first one. No, the second or third, I think. Okay. Um. Yeah, but yeah, no, my point, like there are some good kills, but not very often that I was, was I like, nice. Mm. Um, you know, the most famous one, of course, is the driving scene with the, the logs. The, yeah. Oh yeah, that traumatized that's... everyone who ever saw that. <laughs> and it's it's cool, you know, the gra- yeah. the gore's nice, I guess, but mm. whatever. Anyway, yeah, it, we'll see. What Missed the opportunities, ne- it yeah, sounds next, like. There's a new one coming out next year, so, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it then. We'll talk about it in Spooktober when I watch it. And, um, yeah. and prepare to be underwhelmed. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Alan, you got anything for the boys? Uh, I just watched the first episode of Sugar. We'll talk about Sugar next yeah. week. Yeah, we'll, ne- next, um, we'll make sure we all finish it. You can finish next it in Tuesday. an afternoon. I'll watch it. I'll watch if, it. For, if, list- for listeners at home as well, feel free to please watch it. Let us know what you think. You yeah. can finish it in an afternoon. It's not long. In total, it's like four, four and a half hours long maximum. Yeah, so next week we're going to talk about Sugar. We we'll, might do sp- probably do spoilers. Yeah. But we'll see. But yeah, so if we you're listening... We can open with the spoiler-free section and then go... Yeah, and then go... Yeah. So if you're listening to this, watch Sugar and then we'll talk about next week. Yeah. Um, all right, well, then I'll talk about what I have. I watched Argyle. That's a classic Nathan pick. <laughs> Just like <laughs> I don't garbage. Let, I don't want to let the team down, all right? <laughs> yeah. Someone's <laughs> going to take the hit. That's it. Someone's going to take one for the boys. All right, so it's not as good as the Kingsman movies. Yeah. Um, you know, made made by Matthew Vaughn. I still enjoyed it. It's a fun spy action kind of comedy buddy film. Mm. Keep me engaged uh, the whole way through, despite some questionable moments in the final act and some really bad CGI. Mm. Without going into spoilers, there is a moment in the final act that involves using ice skates mm. on oil. Tell me why that would be a problem. That doesn't make sense. Like a rollerblading on oil. A rollerblade or ice skate? Well, it was, it's a metal skate. Well, is this on like a bed of oil? Like that's like several liters? Like tens no, of liters? There's like, we'll or, say a, a few inches of crude floating around on the ground. Okay. And you're using like a metal skate to skate around the oil. Would that or would that not cause a massive fire? 
I mean, if you generate some sparks and there's fumes of the what, oil. What's under the oil? Is it a metal floor? A metal floor. <laughs> this is like the Seinfeld episode with like the, <laughs> the oils on the ground and um, Newman's driving the bloody van and the uh, and meanwhile machine everyone, gets stuck under it. And it's like generating sparks. <laughs> also, also, meanwhile, people firing guns and stuff in the area too. Well, it depends if it's if it's more like you're spilling like you know petrol or something, then you're already huffing out by the fumes and just die because. Like if it's just like regular thick oil, look, it's, it's probably not flammable. Like it, it doesn't have high enough flash point, and there's probably not enough evaporating okay. into the atmosphere. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I just, I, no, I just assumed a, everyone would end up in an inferno. It, it's <laughs> a, it's a dumb action movie. You can yeah, like suspend yeah. your disbelief yeah. and be like, oh, cool, they're skating around. But from what I've heard, what I've seen looks like the whole movie is not. It very look, it has good. some interesting story elements, which I won't get into for spoilers. Yeah, there's some larger connections at play that I was caught off guard by at the end of the film. Yeah. Um, it's not the worst, but it's not great. Like James said with Monkey Man, hmm. maybe, you know, watch it on streaming. It's on Apple yeah. Plus. Don't go to the cinema. Although, I see, I haven't seen Argo, but I, I would... I'm, I you feel, have seen Argo. I feel, yeah, but it's <laughs> yeah. like, I feel bad saying, yeah. oh, it's like Monkey Man, wait for stream. I'm like, no, 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 no. Monkey Man's probably <laughs> worth watching, whereas Argo, I don't know if that's even worth... Going in, it for. has some nice elements to it, but it's a bit. It was a bit when I saw the CGI cat, I was like, No, thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, please stop. Please do um, not. Doing a complete 180, I also um, watched The American President for the first time. Was that a Rob, Rob Reiner movie, 1995? Mm. Starring our boy Michael Douglas as the President of the United States, Mr. Andrew Shepard. Uh, and it, it's you like know, a, a romantic. It's kind of like a rom com political movie. Like, there's two sides to this movie. You've got the rom com aspect, which is classic Rob Reiner at the time. Yeah. And then you've got the political machinations aspect. What year was this? Film. 1995. Really? Oh. So it's like classic rom com era. Um, you know, playing ticking all the boxes. Mm. You got that rom com element to it, which is it's fine. It's it's funny enough. You know, there's the weird power. This we get into this kind of thing with um, it, it's a bit meta in a way because we talk about how the kind of the weird power dynamics in rom coms where it's a bit, a bit creepy, a bit cringy, a bit rapey, a bit. Mm. And this movie kind of deals with that directly because it's a rom com with the president and like someone who kind of works for a government agency, and she's basically just like, "You're the president, I can't say no," and he's just like, "Yes, you can." All this kind of stuff, but it directly mm. acknowledges in the movie that power imbalance, okay. which is actually something different. Yeah, usually they just usually no usually sweep it under the rug. No, but usually that's kind of one of the the focal points in this movie is like they talk about that kind of like, well, he's the president. It's problematic already. No, but the, we would talk about that yeah. watching the movie. But yeah. usually in the movie itself, they're just they're like, oh, they're in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but this movie deals with that too, okay, which was actually refreshing. Like it's it's makes it not weird. Hmm. Um, and the political machination side of it is, you know, like. Oh, Political drama and conspiracy were so much lighter back in the day than they are now. It's like the whole kind of political conspiracy is like conflicts of interest with the rom-com side of it. Yeah. And also they need votes to pass a anti-crime bill and all this kind of stuff, yeah. right? And an environmental bill as part of a package. And I'm like, man, you know, the con- political conspiracies with Donald Trump going on, you know, like it kind think- of a widowed, like in the movie, it's like, oh, you know, how dare a widowed president go on a date with a woman? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> meanwhile, yeah, in 2024, yeah. we've got the president but in the, the president's I, in court. Yeah. I, I think doing it, some heinous shit. It's, it's a, it's a multifaceted thing. <laughs> yeah. And one of it, one of it is, oh, it's a rom-com. Like the actual political side doesn't really matter. They just, they use it to further the story, to, whatever. Yeah. Also in the nineties, I feel like, like most, most most ma- mainstream movies weren't really going to dive deep into any real problems the no. uh, pol- American politi- political system had. Um, but yeah, I, I think... Not to say it was a naive time. <laughs> and we, 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 were, we weren't old yeah, enough yeah. To, to remember. But yeah, like it's it's insane how bad it's gotten and how it can it still continues in such a way like we're still using the nineties sort of system, like obviously an older system, but we're still looking at it like, Oh, uh, you know, the president is what I, yeah, yeah. But they've, they've devolved it and yeah. covered it in so much shit. And yes. And yet most people are still treating it like, 
it's not a big deal or it's yeah. just like a minor. Yeah. Like it's so quaint is kind of the word watching this. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like it's so much of a nicer kind yeah. of situation. I think it's also a thing of like there were, I mean, Clinton had his own kind of uh, 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 yeah. controversy, but you know, like at the time it's like, oh, big deal, whatever. And looking back on pretty much every presidency, um, it's like, oh, that was some really crazy stuff and we were just kind of like shrugging it off. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying is now things are so bad and yet we're still just kind of yeah shrugging it off or we're still trying to operate within that system. I say we, even though this is American politics, because one, it affects the world and two, Australian politics is also kind of awful at the moment. Yeah. And always, again, always probably has been. Um, well, we blame the Americans for that. <laughs> yeah, it's all there. Thanks, Biden. Well, they get involved with us all the time. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, David McBride, can exactly. we talk about that? Yeah. yeah, he's gone to jail because of the Americans. Yes, and also, let's be honest, Australian. The only laws. person but to go to jail for war crimes isn't the people who committed the war crimes. It's, it's, it's the whistleblower, the, it's the and he was like, he was a military. He was a lawyer. military yeah. lawyer who went and tried to do the right thing and said, "Hey." This is not cool. There's a yeah. war crime, Australian soldiers committing war crimes and we're not doing anything and they threw him in jail. Mm. This country is effed up. And shame on the ABC defund them. Shame, yeah, shame on shame on every a mainstream thing, media like, outlet. Also, can we st- please can people st- please stop calling the ABC left wing? It's not left wing. No. No. No way. Just it, anyway. it's we it's so freaking sad and this is why I always get like uh uh, excited. What's the word? Jimmy's rustled. Yeah, my yeah. Jimmy's are always rustled every time we talk about <laughs> politics, even though people just want to. Oh, we're just yeah. talking about the American president, the nice rom com from the 90s. <laughs> yeah. No, the world is on fire. Yeah. We just. The freaking. Uh, the judge who threw David McBride in jail has been softer on rapists and murderers and giving them lighter sentences or suspended sentences. And yet the man who dared to speak out against literal horrible war crimes is being thrown in jail for almost six years. Yeah, it's ridiculous. This is about that guy who, um, that American soldier who committed war crimes, right? No. He's an Australian soldier. He's an, Austra- yeah, he's an Australian... Uh, oh, Australian, I, I, Australian soldier, I mean, uh, No, no, lawyer. he's an Australian military ro- uh, uh, lawyer who uncovered Australian war crimes. This yeah. is di- this is different to the, to other the big guy. tall man. Yeah, that, yeah like, this is different to the guy him. down the hill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no, that, that that was uh, Ben Roberts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was, was another guy. Different, different. He was, was a guilty. Though, right? He was an Australian di- di- soldier. Different war criminal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was found guilty though, right? <laughs> he was an Australian. Yeah, he was an Australian yeah. soldier. So we can legally we can legally call him a war criminal on air. Look, he's already lost a defamation case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like what's that guy who's a rapist? Shit. Uh, all on. on the topic we've got <laughs> Brit- Brittany Higgins Brittany Higgins <laughs> yeah I know you're talking about the guy I can't remember his yeah. name we can legally say he's yeah. a rapist now I'm gonna look it up because it's hilarious meanwhile that everyone he, needs a good defence attorney that he and tried... the last movie I have to talk about tonight is Mickey Haller from The Lincoln Lawyer wait <laughs> Matthew McConaughey okay oh, no oh, the also, way you yeah, said yeah, that yeah, was yeah. so quick I'm like don't forget convicted racist Andrew Bolt <laughs> yes <laughs> I was gonna say that yeah <laughs> thank you uh, convicted wife bash Harvey Yemeni sorry yeah that's true yeah. We're going to cut this. <laughs> no, congratulations. You played yourself. I mean, we're... Bruce like, Lerman. I, I guess Bruce we're in Lerman, our seven seconds. Bruce Lerman <laughs> is a rapist and we're allowed to say it because he tried to <laughs> sue them for defamation and they're like, no, man, you did it. You just didn't right. get criminally charged for it. Yeah, so people are... Anyway, right. movies, aren't they great? Movies, yeah. We kind of lost Sorry, control. Sorry, Nathan. We kind of lost this control. This is your the segment. No, yeah. This became the social justice segment. Yes. Yeah. Um, I also watched Lincoln Lawyer with a rewatch. Have you seen it before? Oh yeah, rewatch. I should yeah. say. I haven't seen um, it in a very long time. No, it, it still holds up. It's a good time. I remember like he also ma- drove around in a Lincoln in the movie. Yeah, he gets well, he gets driven around. Yeah, by and he goes all oh, right, all right, all right. He sits right. in the back and he yeah, takes yeah. meetings with yeah. shady people. Yeah. It's oh, good. I, I think I saw a clip of that on. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's good. You like just it. recently. Um, and then they made the bikes pull up on him. Well, I was going to get. And he wants more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the the universe works and conspires. It's like Nathan's watching this. Alan needs to see a clip about this. Yeah, that's it. That's how it works. That's how I know all the movies. I um, see clips. Yeah, but then yeah. you never watch them. 
I get the gist. <laughs> it's one of my favorite Matthew McConaughey kind of movies. Like it, it's, it's part a, of his reconnaissance era. Yeah, it, it's got that cool vibe about it. Like mm. it's definitely a cool vibe movie. Mm. I really enjoy it, and I started watching the TV show on Netflix. Oh, okay, very good. You'll enjoy it. Yeah, have you seen it? Yes. Nice. Wait, so um, you watched the TV show, but not the movie? <laughs> no, I don't want to link and navigate it now. But I've watched it for a while. So. <laughs> yeah, no, so I am. I'm watching the the Lincoln Lawyer and I'm, I'm enjoying it. The TV show. I okay, say. yeah. It's good. I have to rewatch the movie. It has some of the same kind of vibes as the film. Um, obviously, the lead actor is less cool than Matthew McConaughey, but that's oh, not. I don't know. He's got that uh, Latin sexual vibe. Yeah. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he, he does. Well, I haven't yeah. seen it, so. You know, you see any of the like, strong, you know, Latin characters. And yeah. The, they, they've got that, you know, very yeah, yeah. like... The machismo. Yeah. 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 Sexual He's, prowess. Uh, the mojo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... It's good. It, Matthew McConaughey is still cooler. You need to watch the movie and All then right. we can have a talk, we right. discussion. We'll, 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 we'll like, put them side yeah, to side. Yeah, yeah. Can't believe you haven't seen the movies before um, I start watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know! It's also peak, it's also peak Alan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but I'm, I'm Wait, isn't it based it. on a book though? Yeah, they're all based on books, yeah. So I'm maybe read the So as far as I'm aware, the movie is based on the first book. Okay. And the TV show picks up from the second book. Okay. So you can oh. you can actually watch like if you imagine the characters they're the same act the same character in your head they yeah. they kind of well that's just another like reason it. to watch the yeah yeah I will watch the movie, movie and then I'll be like okay so Matthew McConaughey had a Latino plasty like the, and then yeah, yeah <laughs> essentially yes because <laughs> you could just edit in you could just edit in the, yeah, the old we'll, cards we'll, where it's like we'll, we'll do a Tuesday a Tuesday yeah. review cut yeah <laughs> we'll be played by um like one of the characters in the movie um I believe is Cisco. But he only has a really small part mm. in the movie, and then obviously he's a large part of it. In he's a large show. part of it in the show. Yeah. So there's kind of you'll appreciate it for like little um little little Easter eggs oh, yeah. that yeah. you'll you'll be like I know that guy from the show. Well, I'll add that to this. Yeah. So. I reckon that's all I've got time for tonight. Anyone else have anything to, to discuss? No, but there will be another bonus episode based on Baby Reindeer. Uh, oh, I haven't week. I haven't watched yeah, that yet. I've got to, I've got to get Do you listeners? That. I'm nearly finished watching the stack, the Blu-rays. No one cares, Cal. No. <laughs> They've given up on you. I'm just saying soon, there'll, there'll be more interesting stuff soon. <laughs> they I won't be. Yes, yes. Let's so, be no, no, it's, it's not that... The, I th- what, you're, what you're watching is the interesting yeah. stuff. It's just that oh. you're, you're like... It's sm- nothing new. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, new doesn't matter, but it's yeah. just like he's watching so many and then we only do these yeah. you know, every couple of weeks. And then um, because we're all watching different stuff, we don't always get to... So uh, I will have to discuss it properly, the top of the mountain, and then the sometimes part. it's uh, it's detrimental because we're like, Alan, Callum, you have to watch this," and you're like, "No, I'm watching the." And then sometimes you're like, "I don't want to watch this, but it's in the stack." <laughs> and then at that, at that point, I'm kind of like, "Come on, Callum, yeah, it's, it's, I'm yeah. nearly done though. I, I will but, have achieved something meaningless." But like I said, subscribe to the YouTube because uh, that's where we do our algorithm baiting. You know, we tr- <laughs> we, yeah. we obviously do something that's a little more in the zeitgeist and like people are obviously searching and talking about mm. and uh, it helps with YouTube growth and it, it also kind of allows people that maybe they don't want the round table or they don't want, I guess... The- it's very much more of a specific discussion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, whereas this, you know, if you if you down with more of this, which a lot of people are, I imagine, or, or three no, people we, are. We, we, used to, we used to do the... Like oh the new show let's all watch it and discuss it and then we just everyone got too busy yeah. and we decided and we ended up we ended up realizing we were watching things we didn't want to watch just because yeah. they were current or popular um, and this is before a lot of that was coming to streaming we we're going we we're actually going out of our way and paying money to see things that's that yeah see. especially that's with like, movies where yeah. we had to like go and see crap that we knew we weren't going to like but it's like oh this is people yeah. people want to hear our opinion yeah um. But yeah, if uh, if Alan keeps up with this stuff, then he can. We yeah, can we do can, bonus. We can episodes. do some bonus episode again. Yeah. Baby reindeer, much like sugar, is kind of short show. I think so. So yeah. I'm like, I can watch an afternoon, not a problem. Yeah. Mm. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll be back next week. You can follow us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Newsmast, especially Newsmast. Yes. Blue Sky. Um, what else? And YouTube? Not, not Twitter. And Twitter. I guess Twitter. We're still there. At Tuesday Review AU on all platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube. Ring that bell. We're on Letterbox too. Letterbox. Um, Nathan B underscore 90. James is Channel Drifter. Channel Drifter. Alan is Alan 20 for his wine review on Unfrosted. That's it. <laughs> and that's uh, all that matters. <laughs> that's it. And Callum is Callum Tuesday or Callum underscore Tuesday. Callum no, Tuesday, Callum Tuesday, one, Tuesday one, word, one word, yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll be back next week. Adios, cousins.